up, get out right out of your bed, that's your quicksand. Getting rid of anxiety in head, you can fix it. Rid of stigmas, all of them you said, we ain't listening. Just remember, try to do your best, you can win this. Okay, here we are. Uh, state of mind, Sunday. Um, please subscribe because we're getting close to 120,000 subscriptions. And I want to get a million so I can get another plaque. Can you show the plaque, pa Paul? Can you show the plaque? Thank you. I want the million. Um, listen, it's been a... I just had a, a state of mind, and I, I, it's been a tough week, okay? It's been a tough month. And uh, I've lost two people to alcohol and uh, mental illness in a month. That's no joke. That's... Um, I don't know, that's never happened to me in my whole life. I'm 60 years old. In a month, and you lose two people that you, that you know, that you... Okay, anyway, I'm going to talk about boxing for a second. Um, I was boxing for about 25 years. It was a great release for me. I was in the ring. I was sparring. I, I, I only wanted to box if I was sparring. Uh, but I did notice after a while that my when I take the gloves off, my hands were shaking. And um, I'd go to work, my hands were shaking. So, but I have not boxed since the pandemic. Um, and my hands don't shake. But boxing is an incredible release. It's an incredible exercise for your mind, for your body. And... Today, who I have here, that's why I wear a t-shirt, you know, because I feel like I trained today. I have somebody who you guys are going to be jumping for joy, um, but he gave me a boxing lesson. More, I haven't boxed in three years, but I got in the ring. And he pushed me, and it was incredible because I wasn't in my head too much, which I thought I probably would be, but I wasn't, maybe because I trust him. He's a friend of mine. Um, so I, it, it was beautiful to do that with this gentleman. His name is, you would know him from, oh, man, he's done, like, so much. Supernatural, and Entertainment Tonight, and he does, he's like a, the, the Matt of all trades, if I can, <laughs> and his name is Matt Cohen. Yeah. What's up, Matt? Hey. Oh, and General Hospital. And General oh, Hospital. I forgot General Hospital. <laughs> and Mama Bear, which I saw. Gotta watch it. I did see it. It's and my you, wife. I know, and you directed it. Yes. And it was badass. Yes. Kick-ass movie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. It was a man. Let's just, you just said so much. I could have just sit here and listen to you like I'm standing across from you in a scene, listen to you do your thing, figure out your moment time piece by piece. I, um, you met me in the boxing gym today, and that was a good place to start for mental health and for physical health. And we haven't really talked in a while. You've been doing your thing. We, yeah. you know, reach out once in a while. Yeah, it's yeah. Up. It's like, do, yeah. you know, the thing. But, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, like you said, we've, we've lost some people very close to us, and, and I felt a call to service. I felt like I've had so many people over the last four years of my time at ET tell me that I have a good voice to help people. Yeah. And then I watched a John Bernthal uh, uh, podcast, and he'd be a great guy for you to talk to because he's, he's really doing some important work mentally yes. as well and yes. john had shia labeouf on right shia labeouf has had a you know argue a, a, a decorative past i should say you know i don't want to yeah. say he's right or wrong with anything but he's he's triumphed and he's been defeated and he's overcame and he's been defeated and he's still on goes and he's on this podcast and he goes 
you know, John asks him, what do you think the purpose of life is? What do you think you're doing here? And he goes, the purpose of life is to figure out what you're good at and then figure out how to help people with that. And I heard that about three months ago, and it changed my life. Yeah. I just said, I got to do something, and the world is in a heck of a predicament. It's in a, it's in a place where it doesn't feel like people are on each other's side, and there's no reason to be that way. And so we got to build our communities up. And for me, it started with reaching out to my, my OG boxing coach, Martin Snow, in the Trinity Boxing Club and saying, hey, Martin, the best I ever felt in my life, the most effective I ever felt of service as a human being is when I was in a boxing gym instilling lessons of boxing, but lessons of mental health and mental wealth to yeah, people yeah. from a boxing standpoint. Not everybody can sit in front of somebody and just let it vent out. Some of us need a physical exertion, and if you can match that with some talking, some communication, what you have is a really unique playing, playing field for people to come in there, loosen themselves up, and the arc of a person walking into a boxing gym, going through a lesson and walking out is profound. It's yeah. amazing to see in one day what can happen to a person through a boxing lesson. I don't just mean hit the bag. I mean, let's have a, a communicative connection in the ring and outside the ring and in between breaths and, and all this stuff. And you can share a lesson, and you can build on that, and you can grow a person. So I called you. I said, man, this just, I want, I've been wanting to do, get a hop on this podcast and talk to you because i got a lot to say, you got a lot to say, and you're a good ear for me to dump it on. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, I reached out, and you and Paula were right on board. And I said, this is a blessing, and this is what's supposed to happen. When people say yes, and the water starts flowing in a direction, ride, ride the river, and the doors open, walk into those open doors. Yeah. So you said yes, my, my trainer Martin hopped on board, we got a crew, we got a couple other people to hop in the gym that wanted to do a workout, looking for some healing, looking for some therapy, and here we are. And perfect timing because of, like you said, there's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot going on in our worlds. There's a lot going on in our Hollywood world. I mean, it's chaos for us, is it not? I mean, it's, it's nuts out there. Everywhere. Let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Let's start with dads. Mm -hmm. It's complicated. Yeah. Um, what did your dad teach you? You know, I would say sitting now at 41 years old and trying to figure it out, because I've been asking myself that a lot. You know, I, I, I am at a place in life, call it midlife crisis -y, like where you start to question what but, you're doing. Let me tell you something. Hmm. You to me, your vibe, the way you look is... At such a better place than I've ever seen you. Yeah. I worked hard to get to this place. <laughs> I man. know, man. You, you but know? I haven't seen you in a while. I know. I know. And you and you saw me arguably at kind of a very high point career wise. Financially, yeah. Yeah. it was in a great yeah, job, but doing it, a great thing, but yes. it was killing me and it was killing my marriage and it was killing me as a dad and it wasn't the fault of the job. No. It no. was that I didn't know how to deal with all that was on my plate, being a new dad, signing a major contract role at a show, coming in there and dealing with heavy, over-the-top, dramatic storylines all the time. And then I got to a place where I couldn't really let go, and I was bringing it home, and I was, conf you know, it's like, as method of an actor as I'm not, I am. Yeah, and so I get if you. you and I have a thing and we're in a church and we just buried somebody and and I get you like that's I'm sitting next to Mo. I'm yeah, not yeah. sitting next to Sonny and I'm affected I by it you. and yeah. I drive home for an hour by myself and in the car I'm saying the lines and I'm reliving them and it just yeah. got me to a to a place I wasn't prepared to be to do that every day for a long period of time. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it wasn't healthy. It wasn't I wasn't good. But you, as the smart individual that you are came into my room yeah. and asked for help. Yeah. Now, I kept, maybe at that time, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that you were dark. Or I just thought I you I remember were, telling you that day, like, Mo, 
Like, I'm a, I'm a painted picture of Hollywood, whoever needs that picture this week. And I've been that for 15 years. Like, oh, you need this guy? I'll be that guy. Oh, you need this guy? Yeah. I'll be that guy. Oh, you need this guy? I can be him too. And you know what? I forgot who I was. Exactly. I forgot. And then you, when you forget who you are and what you stand for, then you don't mean anything. Right. When you don't mean anything, you lose your courage, you lose your faith, you lose your ability to communicate. You, 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 you're a lost person. Yeah, you gotta find yourself, and you gotta have good enough friends around you to go. Hey, you need some help, man. Or I got somebody you should try to talk to, which is a little more how you delivered it. Yeah. And and we did. And listen, it wasn't cheap. It wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> you were. You know, <laughs> yeah, I told you. You told me how many times you went. Crazy. Yeah, we were saying on camera because no. it's almost embarrassing. But but so what? You had to do what you had to do. Yeah, I'm alive. I'm sitting in front of you right yeah. now. I'm here for my kid. I'm have the best. Because it was that dark for you. A hundred percent. I I am. I am not afraid to say I've thought suicide. Yeah. I think everybody thinks it and is afraid to speak about it. I am a person that doesn't think I could have done it because I felt the responsibility to exist for my wife and kid. If and so I say this. I say that if I didn't have a family. I don't know what my circumstance would be. I think having a family saved my life, gives you a reason to drive forward, and my responsibility to be there for them, protect them, be every piece of a dad that I should be and every piece of a husband that I should be drives me out of those dark places. And, and Matt, the, the, the reason, because I've been there a couple times, especially during the pandemic, I was ready to go, yeah, there was tough times, man. Yeah. The reason it is is because, well, mine was anxiety. It was, it, 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 my mind wouldn't stop. Yeah. And then the pain of that, and then it was just horrific. So you feel like, since we're going to talk about suicide, because I think it's important to talk about suicide. It is important. And I'm going to tell you why it's important, because I'm, as I get these, not letters, but comments from state of mind people, yeah. Who, who send me monologues, okay, yeah. about I want to kill myself or this, 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 that. It makes me feel like they've never talked to anyone. Right. And, and that's you, why they're sending. So these are important conversations. They're wildly important because all of us are alone with right. our own problems. Right. You know when we're not alone? When we start talking about them. Right. Period. Right. If you shut your mouth and say nothing, you're trapped in your own prison of your own problem, of your own anxiety, right. of your That's own right. stress, of your own anger. You could turn everything into anger. You could turn everything into anxiety or right. talk about it and communicate. Just say yeah. what's going on. Yeah. You battled stuff. I've battled stuff. Everybody's battling something all the time. Nobody's gets away scot free. Like, oh, you know, it's I'm just a happy go lucky person all the time. The happiest people on earth suffer too. Uh, of course. So if we're not talking about it and we're not doing anything to, you know, we don't eat sugar, don't eat bread, don't eat processed food, don't eat fast food. Why? So your body stays healthy. But what about your mind? I, I know. Talk. I know. Explore yourself. Question your thoughts. Lay in bed at night and go, mm, was I the best parent I could be today? Was that a good decision? Did I hug my wife seven times? Because science says seven hugs a day make you help. Like, right. Question it all. And then talk about it. Talk about it, man. Talk, you know, sometimes I have to be honest with you. Sometimes I, I promote and I think maybe, you know, people are going to think, oh, God, he's promoting. But you know what? The more I talk about suicide, the more I, it, that guy over there could be going, you know what? He's talking about it. Maybe I can at least. No, nah, I'm good. They relate. Yeah. Why can't you be the voice of the voiceless, Mo? Why I can't we live. sit here and talk about something? And if at 5,000 people say, F Matt and Mo for talking about that, and we save one life, yeah. job well done. Exactly. Exactly. You ain't going to make everybody happy, not on a movie set, not in a podcast room, not in a boxing ring, and not with the content we put out. But if it comes from our heart, like we're here to do something, we're here to make a difference, we want to reach out to somebody, yeah, okay, we're going to promote it. We want to have a successful show. We're here yeah. on purpose. So on, on that note, Matt, 
We know two friends. Mm. Okay, I'm bipolar. Mm -hmm. I have a family who loves me. Okay. The two people we, Tyler Christopher and, uh, fuck, I can uh, get emotional. Yeah. And uh, Billy. Billy Miller. Mm -hmm. They're bipolar, both of them, but they were alcoholics and didn't have anybody. And that's what I think. That's why I think they're not here anymore. Because if they've had, if they had a, a people who loved them, one or the other, they probably would still be here. You want to say that, and you then you want to say, if I had picked up the phone. You know, you say, you, say, you say that to yourself every time that you lose somebody like this. You go, if I had picked up the phone, if I had done this and the pandemic and nobody's communicated anymore and people were struggling and this and that. I don't know, you, you know, Tyler's thing is very fresh. It is very new. I don't know a lot of details about it. I know a little more about Billy and it, and it, is, it is. Well, Tyler's thing uh, was alcoholism, obviously. And it was really... He was alone. Yeah. Right? Billy's, I don't know the details, but I would imagine he was alone. He was. And alcohol. Yeah. I, I don't know all of the details, but I know that Billy and I, in our heyday, you know, he would, we would have drinks. He would yeah. have a good time. Right. So I don't put it past him. Um, it goes back to having good enough friends to recognize that you're struggling. And then it, it, it has to cross over into you to you have to talk and you got to communicate because nobody's going to just save you. You got, you got to, you know, if you, if you don't put yourself out there, you're alone. Yeah. And until you do it, you don't know that you can be something other than alone. And I think with Billy and Tyler, they were trapped in their loneliness, even though, and I know Tyler has people reaching out to him, just like Billy had, you know, some people, some family, but it wasn't enough and it wasn't working for them and and whatever you know happened it unfolded unfortunately because it makes now it's the heartbreak and heartache that i feel um when somebody takes their life i go through it right i feel the pain i feel the grief and then it turns to anger because two weeks or three weeks or four weeks later when the, the load lightens a little bit you pick up your phone, you hear a song, and you're like, oh, that makes me think, think of Billy, and I'd like to text him, listen to the song, and I can't. Yeah. And it pisses me off, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It makes me mad because I want to, you know, it just makes me mad. Yeah. I don't know how else to deal with it. You know, I try yeah. to deal with it. I try to communicate. I'm open to talking about it, but it's so frustrating because I feel like I could have saved his life. I feel like I could yeah. save Tyler's life. I feel like I can save you yeah. anytime all the time. I, know. I do feel like I have that power, but I can't be for everybody all the time. And you don't know when they're hurting the worst or when they need you the most. Right. Right. So I'm just, I need to, at this part of my life at 41 years old in Hollywood, I need to make sure that my first purpose and service is reaching out to anybody and everybody all the time. Because why not? I don't want to live a life where I'm not ha helping people. I'm not of service to you or your wife or your family, the people around you that you care about. I don't want to live a life where I'm not helping as many people as possible. That's the end of the story. I've been told that I can speak. I've been told that I can have an effect on somebody with my words. So I'm going to do it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to study how to speak or listen to somebody else's inspirational yeah. speech. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what I think and what I feel and honestly, and if it helps great and if it hurts you it comes from a place of love i'm trying to help you yes and that's what i got to do and that's where i'm at and it's i don't want no no other uh, 40 year old 30 year olds 20 year olds burying themselves for no reason i don't want it it's yeah. unnecessary life is beautiful it's meant to be lived let's slide into our caskets in a now you know the hunter s thompson quote sideways wasted and <laughs> ex, you know you experience all you can experience in a cloud of dust you're like all right already you yeah. know, but not until then. Exactly. Not until then. Let's yeah. ride this out. Let's ride and it also, out. And also, Matt, I don't know where you fall, but for me, faith is very important. It's gigantic. And 
I've said it before. In the beginning, I was hesitant to talk about God. Don't be, man. Well, you yeah. know, I, I get it. I get, I get it. it. Yeah. Trust me. But now I talk ab- because, um, you know, there was a there was a time during the pandemic where I was it was going to happen. Yeah. And I said a prayer. I said, "You got to help me now." Because I got to go. Because I can't do it. Yeah. And the first thing that came to my mind was my family. Mm -hmm. And then what would happen to the state of mind of people who, if I did that, would think it's all right for for them to do that. Yeah. And I didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, But life's too difficult. To do it alone, could they, there's so much happens to us, as you know, that it's it's good. I don't care if it's God, Buddha. It doesn't matter anything yeah. that you 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 look up to and they, that a higher power, because life's just too difficult. It is too difficult. It's everything you said resonates with me a hundred percent. And let me tell you something: the thing that we're trying to do through kind of this boxing therapy world and and teaching and showing people their ability is that you can't live the life you want without some some courage and some Mm -hmm. faith. And those things go hand in hand. And like you said, whether it's Jesus Christ, God, Buddha, make up your name to uh, of whoever your great beholder is, you've got to have some faith in something because faith gives you courage courage gives you faith they work hand in hand you know what i'm saying yeah you get both things i'm not saying everybody needs to open a bible i'm not saying that no, i'm saying no. don't right. be afraid to read a page or two it might be some interest yeah. but also believe in a greater thing than yourself there's we don't know everything the most exciting thing about life is not knowing everything yeah you don't want to figure it all out you got it all figured out it's like all right well that's the end of yeah. the excitement yeah. nah You don't need to know everything. You don't need to know the great beholder of the universe and that that until you get to that point. But believe me, there's something bigger than you out there. Right. A hundred percent. Close your eyes and say thank you as soon as they open in the morning. If you don't live your life with gratitude right there, that's the easiest step to change your life in a positive direction. Alarm. Thank you. And then I make my kid and my wife, we go outside when the sun's setting, and I go, don't forget to thank it, that you get to see another sunset. There's a million people go to sleep a week and don't wake up, you know, or something, arguably, I'm you know, not a, a st- statistician or whatever the word <laughs> is, but it's a lot of people yeah. don't get another day, every day. Right. So, you know, be grateful for, for where you are, uh, why you're there, and do as much good as you can within the moment. I, it's... Suicide's real. People are often themselves left and right. They're often themselves because people aren't talking to them. They don't feel like they could communicate. They feel like they're alone. There's many different reasons. Through the supernatural universe, I have talked to hundreds of people that have shown me their attempts on their really? own. Hundreds of people come up to me. You're John Winchester character. Or you on GH is this. That scene kept me alive. That's effective work. If you can save one person through your job, I don't care if you're an actor or a yeah. garbage man yeah. or a mechanic or a yeah. house painter. If you can save one life, yeah. you're doing that work that you should be doing. Yeah. You should be lending a hand and helping people. People are struggling, and there's no buddy above us that's going to go, oh, let me get you, community. It's up to the people of the community. Yeah. Us. Yeah. To give a sense of community and let people feel that sense of community wants them in the community. Not, let's separate our community into two teams so the people that are pulling the strings upstairs can call all the shots and keep us wherever they want. No, 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 no. It's about us and the community, and we got to put in the work. And it starts with this. Two, Two people sitting down in a room having a conversation talking about the hard shit. End of story. That's where it begins. So you never got uh, got caught up in alcoholism or anything like that. You know, my 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 blood mother hasn't been in my life because my dad got custody of me when I was eighteen months old, and she was an alcoholic. So I've always I come from a, mm. f- a family of addicts. You know, various different 
issues, some alcohol, some pills, some this and that. Um, everybody's struggled and I refuse, you know, I'm a cannabis user occasionally and I want that out of my life too. But I, I, I'm like a, you know, I drink every two weeks or something with the wife and yeah. a thing, but I don't, I don't like alcohol. It scares yeah, me. Yeah. It scares me. And it scares me because I know my brain's fragile and alcohol is a very effective thing on your brain. Yeah. And I don't like that. I, you know, a cannabis situation is a, for a sleep aid more than anything, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's arguably not great for you either, but alcohol is bad for your brain. It's a depressant, man. Like, it is what it is. So when people are going to sit at a bar and go, oh, I'm going to drown my sorrows and feel better, you're going to feel better until you feel worse. <laughs> you're going to feel better until right. you feel worse. worse. <laughs> yeah. And then what are you going to do? i got to feel better again. Yeah. And you're going to chase that slightly of better course. feeling, man. Yeah. And it's it's this downward spiral. And I've seen, and no, I'm not saying don't drink. I'm no, saying no. enjoy yourself. Yeah. You do your thing. But everything is relative. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, you and I can go to the store right now, buy enough alcohol to kill all of us in two seconds. You know, like you chug yeah. a bottle out. So be careful. We, yeah. You know, the beauty of being American is hopefully it stays this way. It's free country. And yeah. you can make dumb decisions. And we hope you don't. Yeah, yeah. But you're free here, so go enjoy some booze if you need to. For me, it's not my thing. Alcoholism is, you know, because I, I come from so many people that have struggled. I don't want to fall down. I haven't had a Tylenol or Advil in 18 years. No. I had a ruptured Achilles in six months into the pandemic. I was outside on a Sunday, and I go, hey, Macklin, my son's eight. I'm like, I'm going to teach you to skip. I've never taught you to skip. I didn't warm up, and my old-ass tendon ruptured. The Achilles rolled up my calf into my leg. I had to go have surgery. They opened my leg in three spots because the calf muscle exploded. All this stuff ripped. And I get out of the hospital and they give me like 40 Percocet. Like a bottle full of painkillers. And, I, you know, the first night you take a half of one and you're like, whoa, this is. And you're like, as soon as you get through that point, you go, I never can put this in my body again. This is, it's dangerous yeah, and you yeah, get it. Yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of people can feel a thing that feels like that and can't walk away from it. And I don't, I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be addicted to life and loving people yeah, and speaking yeah. people up and building them up and being your wingman and your sidekick and your hype man. I want to be that for everybody. Yeah. I've been given a lot in my life. Hollywood has handed me a beautiful career. Arguably, I'm a white privileged dude. I'm, I'm open to say that. My career's been easy. I'm handsome and white. Now I gotta struggle a little bit, Mo. I gotta struggle a little bit, and you know what? Laugh. It feels good. <laughs> I love it. Listen, other people will say it differently. Yeah, that it ain't been that easy for me. No, no, I like that. Yeah, listen, I like honesty, man. Don't lie to yourself. I'm handsome and white. Hollywood's been easy for me. I'm handsome in Spanish. So listen, what do? <laughs> yeah, and you're also talented, That's super, true. superbly talented. <laughs> so. I'm still learning my talent and figuring it out. I don't think I'm untalented. I just think it's been easy for me. And so now it's my time to return the favor. And I'm yeah. not returning it to Hollywood. I'm returning it to the people of the Los Angeles community. I don't care if you're from Compton yeah. to Valencia to see me to more part. Wherever you are, come see me. I'm going to help you. Call me. You got a friend that's hurting? Yeah. Give him my number. I'm going to just show up for people. That's where I'm at. I'm going to do it. I'm tired of... I don't want any handouts. I don't want nothing free. If I'm not affecting somebody's life for the positive, I'm not doing anything anymore. That's where I'm at. It's, it's a good way. It's I a, have to be. Yeah. That's right. it. And your wife, I want to know. Shh. Let's, let, don't get me going on her. I mean, I'm here because of her. I'm a wild person. She wrangled a wild horse running Full blast, throttle wide open, veins ripping out. She put a saddle on and said, hey, you're capable of a lot more than this. You ain't got to knock out everybody that says something to you. You don't got to talk trash. You don't got to be tough. You don't have to be this. Who are you? And at 33 years old, she got pregnant. I was 33. She was younger. But I, I was like, oh, I got to figure out who I am now. And if it wasn't for my wife, who I told her, she has a twin sister, identical twin identical? sister. Identical? Ide you meet her. I'll bring, I'll bring everybody back. Yeah, I love that. I don't have a big thing up at the house. I need everybody in my yeah. life. I need everybody back. But she's got, he's got an identical twin sister. And um, it's a shit. I was going to say it right before that. I just fucking forgot because I'm thinking about you. You were 33 years old. 
I was 33 years old. She was younger, but I, at 33, I said, I got to figure out who I am. I have been pretending to be everybody that everybody wanted me to be. Since I got to Hollywood at 23, 24 years old, I said, oh, I'll be that actor and I can pretend to be this. And I, I pretended to be everybody, whatever they needed me to be. If I had to be this on a show, I was that person for them for, to fulfill the character and keep the job. And then I had a kid and I, walk, I remember walking into a casting room after I had my son. And it was, it was I, I think it was GH. Because I booked GH, like it was like he was like a couple weeks old. He was like four or six weeks old, and I was there, and I was there five days a week, and it was it was crazy. And I um, I remember walking in. This is nothing offensive towards any of the people I love there, Frank, and some of the ones we lost, unfortunately. But Many, pretty, yeah. uh, behind the scenes, a producer oh, yeah, yeah. people like you know people that I was tight with. Like I'm a guy who walks in the building. I I want to say hello, good morning, everybody. And um, I remember walking in the room, and I felt so powerful. Because I knew everything in the world I already had at home. I had a baby and a woman that didn't want to abandon this piece of shit. This, yeah. this dude? Yeah. Um, that's worth fighting for. Yeah. I swore up and down to her sister when I was friends with Mandy for a long time. We were on a show together. She was dating another the star. I won't bring up his name because I'm a little jealous of him still. Um, but she was dating this other star and he wasn't really treating her right. And I was like, I remember she was just my friend at this point. And I looked at her one day and I said, let me tell you something. Don't deal with that. And I was planting that seed of I'm going to have you and I'm going to be right for right. you because yeah. I can I'm not liking, I'm just watching as an outsider, this guy not treat you, you're a nice girl from like a good family, your dad was in the army, you got people that love you, and you're, because this guy's the hot yeah. commodity in Hollywood, that's your thing, and, and she dumped him that day, and that was in the story, and we've been together, she was my first on-screen kiss in Hollywood, no. yes, my very first on-screen kiss, I married that lady. You, did you know from the kiss? Nah. I never. I don't want nothing to do with her because I was I was a young guy in Hollywood, and I wanted to be successful so bad because I dropped out of college to come here. I was the first person in my family to go to college, so my dad was like, "You got to ride to FSU. What are you doing?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I met a talent manager. I want to move to California and go surfing." I was a young kid, just like wanted to run away from Man. the stuff I was doing in Florida, which wasn't. Oh yeah, you're from Florida. Bro, that's a whole yes. other story. And we can chop it up into that, too. Yeah. Like, I went to Florida State University and, you know, was doing whatever kids would do at 18 years old to make an extra buck. You know, you're trying to sell some weed. You're trying, you're getting involved with bad people. You got guns. I came out of L.A. Fitness one day. I'll never forget this. And I was all just worked out. You know, I was trying to play football at FSU. So I was like 20 pounds of just like meat. Like, not cut, but just yeah. I was eating yeah. creatine. Or, you know, being a, just a dummy. I and just amazing. <laughs> Killing my liver, and um, creatine. I swear, I would pregame before we went out to have drinks at the bar. I would drink like dry creatine, a protein bar, and I'd be like, "Let's have shots of Jack Daniels." I'm like, uh, imagine what my guts were doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyways, I was, I was, I was there, and 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 all this was going on, and I was, I was about to get hurt somehow. I was not afraid of any. Somebody pulled the gun on you. Yeah, yeah, I, I came out of the gym one day, and this was in South Florida. I drove home to see my dad for the weekend. I was coming out of the gym, and it was in the parking lot. And I had just had a good workout. I was real big, and I pulled my shirt off. You know, you're driving in your car, Florida windows down. You just, I'm a dummy Florida you're kid. You're all buffed. And yeah, you just want to look jacked, and so somebody notices your vein in your shoulder. Like, it's just silly boy stuff. Right. And I roll through a stop sign in the parking lot, and I kind of, and there's another guy here, and, and I kind of like roll through my stop sign and get next to him to pull out, and he puts his window down and just like stares at me real hard. And he's like, I could tell like maybe 10 years older than me at the time. He's like maybe 35 to 40. I'm maybe, no, no, I'm young at this time, so I'm like 18 or 19. And I just for no reason look at him to be tough and go, what, motherfucker? Yeah. And before I could finish the er and that word, he's outside of his car and he's got a 50 caliber. I remember the gun specifically because, you know, the front of it's like a triangle. It's like yeah. got this big front and a big hole. And he's running towards my car and he's only like 15 feet. His car's facing this way and I'm here and there's like 15 feet in between. I see the gun and he's just pointing and I just 
put my yeah. head down and hit the gas. Yeah. And I go around the corner and I'm like, oh, thank God. And I look in the rear view and he's in his car chasing me. I cut across three lanes of traffic. I go, I'm like, I'm going to, this is it. This is, I'm either fight or flight right now. And I got a flight because I'm not about to have a shootout. Like, what is, this is not the old West. I'm not going to, I'm not going to survive this. And I, I, whatever, I got away from my turn. I did it like a U-turn at like 80 miles an hour on I-75 in Sheridan Street. And I flipped the car around and whatever. I lost him in traffic. And I got home and I was like, my dad was there with his then, his then wife. And I, I, was, I was like, I, I, like, I almost just died. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, this is some guy almost just, he was going to kill me. And I knew I was going to die. I knew it. I knew I was going to die if I didn't survive this. Like, I, if I had stopped, he was going to kill me. And I, um, my dad was like, you know, the guy he is was like, all right, let's go back there. Of course. And, and immediately, immediately in me, I go, no, man. What do you mean? Yeah. So we can both get shot? And, you know, my dad comes from a different school, man. He's, he's a different guy from the 80s. He's got tra his own traumas and his own survival tactics from the time and the space he came, he came up in. Um, and I just said no. And that was the last time I ever opened my mouth, you know, for no reason. Uh, uh, unless it was something that needed to be, you know, opened up about where there was me protecting my wife or, yeah. you know, something. Yeah. But I, it was a valuable lesson. Well, that was then. Now it's... Now you just die. You, they, don't yeah, give, they don't give you a shot. They just say, ah, I'll just shoot you for no reason. Like, it's... It's ridiculous what's happening now. It, it, our city has, has crumbled into a tough spot, and I'm hoping it can turn around. I, I, I am worried about Los Angeles. I'll tell you that. Like, I'm worried about the city. Is, yeah. is what it is. Call it the politicians. Call yeah, it yeah. the liberals. Call it the pubs. Call it the Dems. Call it whatever you want. But we need a recovery program, and we need a big, big yeah. movement to happen amongst the people. When you, when you see homeless people, because I, I got to tell you something. I don't understand. What don't you understand about it? How uh, somebody could be in a, a baby in a carriage living in the street. And, you know, some people may say, well, that's not, they're faking it. I, I, I don't care. It breaks my freaking heart. And it should. Every time I see people on the street, I, I just don't, I, and my mind always says, what the fuck can we do about this? Right, and you feel helpless. Yeah. You feel helpless. And I just leave. But I go... Or you give them some money or I something, know. and then you feel terrible because you're like, I don't... Yeah, you know, where's the money, you know, right. people say don't do that because where's the money going to go? You can't help yourself. But I leave thinking, can we not fix it? Let me ask you about entertainment tonight. Yeah, man. I'm going to give you a brutal truth, but go for it. Well, I think, I think that's a... I don't know. I couldn't do that. That's a difficult job. I couldn't do it. Oh. Well, you, you... I did it because I had to do it, and I had to deliver for a lady who found me on a convention stage, Aaron Johnson, my friend. She saw me. She's the EP there. She's a great woman. She gave me an opportunity. She taught me everything I know, her and the host, Kevin Frazier and Michelle. That being said, beautiful people there, very productive, not my thing. Damn. I want... To sit down and have an extended conversation without any agenda that I need to get to about your divorce or how your kids are or anything that this celebrity may or may not want to talk about. And E.T. is very, very good and very careful at being positive, uplifting. We're not TMZ. No offense, TMZ. When E.T. is not TMZ. You know, they're not looking for gossip yeah. and hype. They're just trying to feel good stuff. So they like family stuff. But I'm a person that wants to just sit down and talk to you. Like we're doing here. Right here. This is what I want to do. And what do they want you to do? And I have three to five minutes with a celebrity. I have seven questions on a red carpet. I'm the f number one entertainment outlet in the world. I got 40 other entertainment outlets waiting to see what I ask in that moment. I have to create an authentic moment between an A-list celebrity and myself within seconds. I got to put it all together. And then I can't just go into... 
What's Three that? to five minutes. At the most, sometimes that's what you get. You know, like some t- some celebrities, I'll tell you this, the A-listers, the people out there running, gunning, and busting their butts every day to be successful in this town, show up for the press. The Tom Cruises, the Will Smiths, you know, even though Will Smith, whatever yeah, yeah. his Oscar moment, Will Smith is a guy that gives to the press. Tom Cruise will spend hours. The biggest stars in the world get it. But you still only have three minutes with a Benedict Cumberbatch or, or a Rachel McAdams, and you got to make a moment out of it. And I don't want to be forced moment, and that's okay. We do create those moments. Kevin and uh, Kevin Frazier and Michelle Turner that, that are over there, and they kind of you know anchor the show, are very good at doing that. But I want long-form, uninterrupted talking. I want you to look at me, and if we have to be silent for a second because we're dealing with something, that's okay. I want that. I want a real talk. I don't want to talk into a commercial and have to bring you back out of a commercial. I don't want to try to grab your attention. I want to talk to you. I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I have things to say. I've learned a lot. I've lived a lot. Don't judge a book by its cover because I look like this doesn't mean I don't have a wild life experience. What we're touching on today is bits and pieces and it's just fragments of the shit I've experienced and the stuff I've overcome. And I'm not saying I had a harder life than anybody else. I'm saying I've overcame things that are wildly colorful. I could tell you stories that you go, what? Like, you know, crazy stuff. And that's what I want to do. So entertainment tonight taught me how to host a show, how to read a prompter, how to handle the most intense moments in Hollywood. Damn. And I learned how to not get my heartbeat stays at 50 and I'm there for it. And I was enjoying myself, but I want to grow from it, whether it ends up in a late night talk show, a daytime talk show, something where I can extend the conversation or just a podcast. I have no problem putting a proper podcast together where some episodes are 30 minutes and some are three hours. I am here for the conversation and the conversations are what's healing the world. There's 80 million podcasts or whatever there is all of a sudden. Do you know why? It's not just because people are getting paid ads and they have subscribers and this and that. It's because they're talking and people are listening. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. End of story. Yeah. Entertainment is entertainment. You got a scripted show. We're going to follow these characters. We're happy to have all that. You have to have conversation, politicians included, where it's not six minutes or seven minutes of talking. You have to quickly win the moment and then get to the commercial. Right. And then when you get back from the commercial, you're going to get a wrap-up from a TV How news host. How did you host. do it? I didn't. I didn't do it. I just did as much as I could, and I just detached did any, did from it. Did you ever talk to any big star and get flustered at any Never. Honestly, you just did it. Do you know what? Well, you want to know the craziest thing, man? The biggest stars, The Rock, they remember your name. Uh, the biggest stars. I'll tell you something about The Rock. And, I, and, and of all the people I could pay homage to their ego or whatever, it shouldn't be The Rock, but he's a guy that deserves it. I was at Comic-Con last year. At Comic-Con, you interview the big, every one of them. You name the superhero, Damn. they're my buddy. We were all in the Hawaiian shirts and trying to fit in. It was high. It was this whole thing. I met every single f- awesome, famous character from your famous sci-fi thing at Comic-Con. Rock's got Black Adam coming out. He walks up to the red carpet. Now, when a guy like The Rock gets to the red carpet and he does press, nobody else in the press line cares to talk about the rest of the cast. They want to talk to The Rock. Right. So what does The Rock do? He sees everybody get all giddy, me included, everybody pumped up to talk to him. He makes his entire cast go first one by one so they each got their moment at the press and then when the his time was passed and he should have not even been there anymore he should have moved on to a panel or whatever he was supposed to do he gave like 20 minutes to each outlet sat there said look at you 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 know makes comments that are friendly yeah i noticed your physique yeah it goes a long way to 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 relate and communicate with a human and not just say the thing that needs to be on tv the rock is a guy that gets it i'm high-fiving him from afar you know like he's He'll spend the time, and he puts people in front of him. Like and I always say, nobody promotes better than him. No, he's great. He's like bam, 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 bam. Everything yeah, everything. and he and it's and it's natural. And look, he's got that wrestling background, and that's a that's a promotional monster. Yeah. When you learn how to do that, both that's act true. in those yeah. 
you know, those wrestling moments, build up that fire, build up that crowd, that's promotion. That's just you on a red carpet. The sound bites that we use on Entertainment Tonight, if I do a three to five minute interview, the piece of the sound bite is like 15 seconds. Oh and then it cuts to a shot of your Instagram and this and that and some other pictures and a blah, da, 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 and then I put a voiceover over it. You know, they write the beautiful writers at Entertainment Tonight. Shout out to the writers and editors. They really are good. Um, and they put it together and they piece together this great show and, and they get big viewership. Like the second place news outlet next yeah. to them isn't even close in comparison, you yeah. know, vis- uh, viewership wise. But they taught me how to do a lot, right? They taught me I could be Ryan Seacrest. I sat with Ryan Seacrest. I got to meet him. We spent a lot of time together, and they taught me how to do his job. And then meeting him and, and, and talking with him, and I interviewed him week after week on American Idol, and I saw how hard he worked flying back to the, the yeah. Kelly show every Sunday night. I, he'd be with me, and then he'd be on TV Monday morning first thing. He was with me till midnight. Damn. And he was on TV in New York, which is three hours earlier. Like, you can't do anything but respect somebody with that, you know, in this industry. Like, the dude has, he, he, he builds podcast studios all over the country in hospitals, in children's hospitals. Damn. Dude, I went to the, ch- the j- hospital where he's got this thing, and he's got a full studio on, like, the, you know, he's got 20 kids and their parents in there, and they're, you know, rolling themselves around. It's a very visually difficult experience. He handles it like a gym. For me as an interviewer, having an eight-year-old son walking through there and seeing all these young folks, Ooh. you know, you talk about kids, go to children's hospital, walk, uh, walk around at seven o'clock in the morning and see an eight-year-old sister with brain surgery wrapping on her head, pushing around her five-year-old brother in a wheelchair that got his legs amputated. Put, you, put some stuff into perspective for you real quick about what matters on this earth real fast. So... Shout out to those type of people. You know, these big stars, they deserve this recognition. They're doing good work just because you only see them on the American yeah, Idol. And, and you don't see the other Man, things. Seacrest, Rock, and those are just two randoms I'm picking yeah. out. I've talked to 500 people. You know, I did however yeah. many episodes of that show over four years. And, and, you know, I think I maybe talked to one actor I didn't like the whole time. You know, and I didn't. Because like, maybe she was having a bad day or I was an off day. You know, but yeah. 99.9% have been pretty good. And I don't know if that's because I won't put up with the nonsense like i'll just be like interview over or you know they just respect me enough to give me a good interview but i I have nothing but good things to say about entertainment tonight and the people that i i met there um i wish the strike didn't happen so we didn't have to part ways under the circumstances we did it's unfortunate and and it hurts my heart a little bit but that's life and your heart's supposed to hurt once in a while yeah it's okay yeah it's okay yeah it's okay you're human well uh Anything else you want to talk about? Um, you want to get into? I want to say uh, that I am just appreciative of you, and that's it. And I keep it short and sweet. You, you, you answered my call, and you showed up for me. And your wife included is a very special person because I haven't, I, you know, I think I met her once or twice yeah. through the halls over there, but she communicated with me well we communicate well we're communicating together we're going to help each other do some yes. other projects yes. we've got some things going on i just want to say i appreciate you and your family for showing up for me thank you because you don't have to yeah just show up keep on showing up not just for me for the people in your life your kids their kids whoever i know that's easy them grandbabies are beautiful um but that's it just thank you man i appreciate you so much. how i want to conclude this is i want you to uh interview me for three to five minutes i'll get you one you ready yeah maurice it is it is exciting to see you to say the least i'm i'm less excited knowing that you maybe don't want to do acting for the rest of your life where are you at with that Tell me about that, because I think you and I kind of see eye to eye of where we are in our careers, even though we're vastly different. You've achieved far more than me on that spectrum, but the way I'm looking at Hollywood right now might reflect the way you're looking at Hollywood right now, and I'm a bit frustrated with things. That's a good question. Um, Right now, I'm happy acting. Uh, It just goes in waves, up and down. I just, you know, a lot of times acting... I'm afraid it's going to hit my anxiety button. And so How so? Like, well, because when I act, a lot of times I, I go pretty deep, and then I, I feel it, I'm like it, I don't want to do it. It's almost like because a lot of times that I've had these type of scenes, I've had some anxiety. Sure. 
So, but, but but isn't that good uh, that you push through it and you put that out there and you use that anxiety to perform? Like I, I know it doesn't feel good, but does it always have to feel good? You know what I'm saying? I think your work well, really speaks to a lot of people. Yeah, Matt. But at this point, after 30 years on General Hospital, um, I want to. I want. I don't want to work hard. I want to work easy. Okay. Is it ever easy though? Yeah, yeah, because because now I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm the more the most relaxed I've ever been in my, yeah, in my you life. Seem, I'm so relaxed. Yeah, I hate to say it, but you're glowing, bro. You're glowing. Even when I saw you there, it's like you and the wife pull up, and I was like, look at this. It's guy. a different vibe. It's not dark, right? It feels good. It's That's just... kind of uh, what I want always. Now, I know what you're saying that you got to challenge yourself, and but. It's almost like the way I feel, I'd rather do this than act. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, I don't have to answer to anybody. Yeah. yeah and you know what I, I'm talking I, listen, about. Listen, I know more than anybody. I've answered to every single person on every single level in Hollywood. I've done it year after year after there year. You go. And I'm at that same place. Yeah. But the effect, going back to the suicide conversation, going back to these things, like your ability to just be on screen is saving lives. So the weight of you not being on screen is now tremendous. So in, in that in itself almost creates anxiety, and I can understand that. You're almost being called to a higher power as Sonny on that show. I know, I know maybe it's not what you want to do anymore, but maybe you have to. A that, bit. That's a good one, but that, that sometimes I feel like I have to. Well, I have to because i got to... I gotta make a living, right? Sure, but it's you know what you gotta make a living, and you gotta and keep a couple people living. You know, and I get you, but I I gotta be honest. I think, well, I kind of know. I think this is helping people more than General Hospital because yeah. what I'm doing on General Hospital a lot is sure. You know, maybe early General Hospital is different. Right, they had it more. Uh, I did an Alzheimer's story that does help quite yeah. a lot right yeah that was a beautiful that was a beautiful that you know i was there for most of that oh you were there i was i was there when mike came in well i was the in oh, doctor that right. introed all that you know that's and then right. i kind of left and you kind of had to still yeah. and my dad got all time at the same time i remember that i get that goosebumps yes yeah. and that. then yeah. he died pretty much almost similar to the time that the mike died isn't that crazy how that works out yeah and coming off of the pandemic where I was messed up for four months, I went straight to that story. Mm. And I knew Jeez. I had these monologues to him and my dad's got it. So I, I said to myself, just say it. Just say it. It's so hard to do sometimes. I know. It's so I, hard to do I said, don't act. Just was it, was it, it? Did you win a damn Emmy that year? Did I want to? Yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm never surprised. When I'm surprised is when they don't hand you a trophy because they got to give it to somebody else because you got too many, you know. But I look at your work there, and I, I've always felt, you know, you, yeah. it's lovely to stand across from you because you raised the bar for me. You know, I got to figure yeah. out how to come up to to Mo's level, and that was very important. Now. This is the end of our three or five minutes because the publicist is going to pull you out of my way right oh, now. One more. But before you go, one thank more. you thank you so much. I appreciate oh, you yeah, giving me. Before you go, two questions. <laughs> what do you say to your 15-year-old self about to embark on a journey of being an adult and figuring it out? What do you say to yourself? Not to your sons, not to no, your no. kids, uh, to, to I yourself. I would say to myself, at, at 15-year-old Maurice, stop worrying about what people think right away yeah it's a tough one when you do that you fly yeah and it's a beautiful freedom of oh, that feeling and it's hard where to are you at in that uh, i'm working on it uh, i'm like 60 percent. okay i'm i'm pretty much at about 80 that's that's magic and, and it's that's... less only in the last couple years yeah and when you do when that happens oh man then you relax then you don't think and then you do. You don't think. You do. And the second part of that is you've done an incredible amount of things in and around this town. What else is on the list? Excluding this podcast, 
if you could have your pick of what to do in and around Hollywood entertainment and all that's there, what do you want to do? Like if you could do it tomorrow, if we could green light it tomorrow, starring along here, him, her, whatever, this content, that content, reality, non real like what is, what, what's on your list or, or is this the thing right here? I would like to get some people together in a boxing gym. I know Freddie Roach. It's a good one. You know, use his gym and shoot a mental health show with just a bunch of men. I mean, I can maybe call Stephen A. Smith. Frank Grillo's a friend of mine. Um, and, and just shoot a whole thing in the boxing ring. Get a cool crew yeah. that would shoot it. Yeah. And look real cool and just talk about men, problems, mental health, mental illness, suicide. We just, all these men getting into it. I think that's very possible. I think it's very necessary. How about that? Uh, I think it's incredibly necessary. Yeah. And that would be, I've always thought about that as a goal of mine. And uh, I hope, you know, we'll see what happens. Listen, when you speak it, and you say it over and over again, yeah. you have two choices. Either make it happen or become a liar. And I've never known you to be a liar, liar, right? So we'll make that happen. I feel like that's a great end note. Listen, the publicist gave me like seven, eight minutes. I appreciate that. Sometimes I get long-winded, especially when I'm oh, with that's somebody right, that's like family. Hey, it's all right, buddy. All right, thank you're, you're, you're a good guy. Thank you. So I want to say, uh, just want to kiss Matt Cohen's ass for just two seconds. I'll take it. He came in here and... Uh, just pretty much <laughs> brave as hell. That's how I want to leave this. He was brave as hell. And I, I'm not going to say more than anybody who's done this podcast, but I will say he's one of the bravest as far as this conversation that he had of anyone that's done this podcast. It was amazing, and I thank you, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Mo. I want to just take one second and dedicate this to our fellas that ain't here with us no more. Tyler, yeah. Tyler and Billy and, and both of their honors. Rest in power. And that's it, baby. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Anytime you want me, I'm here. Anytime you want to talk, you're struggling. Paul, you're struggling. I got you. All right. Thank I you. I got you. Never hesitate. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right. State of mind. Bye-bye.